Cormac McCarthy is a masterfully cynical and nihilistically vivid storyteller. His descriptions of violence and despair are like throwing sand in your eyes before they're pecked away by crows, and the lasting impact of his stories are like a hemorrhoid that constantly taunts you as to why you still live with your parents. But McCarthy doesn't just swim in the swamps of hopelessness because he thinks he's some provocateur or sadist or on just way too many bath salts, he simply has a niche for dwelling on the terrible parts of humanity. To be fair, not everything he writes is total unforgiving bleakness, but the way he solidifies his ideas and imagery with what has been critically described as like a lyrical stream of consciousness feels personal and profoundly haunting. He rejected certain fundamentals to writing structure and simply wrote things as he saw them, without much care for literary technicalities, which as a dyslexic I find comforting and it's something I universally employ in my own writing, but admittedly it does come at the cost of distinguishing things like dialogue and pauses because he wasn't much for punctuation. Really, his style was raw and poetic, and for as challenging as his themes were, he never aimed to shock or sensationalize violence, depravity, or negativity just to get a reaction from you. McCarthy wanted to explore humanity at its very fringes, where everything we know about good and bad, morality and mortality were completely pushed aside for just our pure instinct to live and survive in a world where anything natural and even supernatural could change or redefine everything in an instant. There were biblical themes behind McCarthy's stories, and his general philosophies are consistent throughout his work, but the one story that seems to generate the most mainstream attention is certainly not his most uh, messed up or harrowing by any means, but if I were to call it anything, I'd say his 10th and last currently finished novel, The Road, is probably the most appropriate and arguably safest introduction to the guy. Even if that isn't really saying much. So let's talk about it. If it sounded like I undersold the road in comparison to McCarthy's other novels like Blood Meridian and The Orchard Keeper, don't worry, the road is one grim son of a bitch. In fact, as hyperbolic as it might sound, it's probably up there alongside I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream as one of the most aggressively depressing post-apocalyptic stories ever conceived. The story follows a nameless father and son as they journey on a derelict road stretching across a cold decaying world torn apart by an ambiguous disaster, hopefully leading to whatever McCarthy considers salvation to be, which in this case is just more nothingness. Like with McCarthy's other work, it's grounded in a very minimalistic perspective, mostly depending on McCarthy's agonizingly uncompromised view of what the end of the world would truly look like. It doesn't really explain why the world is at its end, it kind of implies nature just said f you to humanity for our terrible mistreatment of it and each other and decided to just shit the bed, which to be fair is morbidly timely when you consider our current state of the world. I have heard a few people interpret some environmentalist message behind it, but I personally just don't see this fitting within McCarthy's vision because, at the end of the day, this is purely about a father and son desperately trying to latch onto whatever mere glimmer of hope they can find while accepting the inevitability of death. And this isn't just another generic fish or mortality style setup, it touches on deeply taboo subject matter, like the father literally teaching his own son how to take his own life without hesitation in the event that something bad happens, because in the context of their circumstances, it's probably the most practical decision when the entire world is out to get you, and the catalyst of their journey is due to the fact that the mother has already killed herself before the story even begins, and the father himself senses his own demise just around the corner. <laughs> and who said books can't be fun? I mean, if seeing all natural life wither and die, lakes dry up, and food and water becoming exceedingly rare isn't bad enough, it's the cannibals that really bite you hard on the ass. 
uh, quite literally. The way they're described is just frighteningly cold. The book doesn't try to embellish them as monsters or anything from a work of fiction. It just treats them like real people trying to survive in futile times, with our only perception of them being villains is the fact that the father says they are. In that respect, the boy is raised to see him and his father as the good guys and everyone else as the bad guys, as if they're consciously aware that they're characters in a book that is written from the father's emotional perspective. Yet, when the son begins to develop his own independent mindset that conflicts with his father's, he starts to realize that the father's efforts to moralize and justify his own aggressive behavior shows that everyone is figuratively on the same page. Regardless of the abundance of media that The Road has inspired, I think it's more complex than simply just a father trying to teach his own son how to survive in this new world order, with their most precious possession being a gun that's kept clean so that if they need to use it, it won't backfire. If anything, I think the real emotional tension of the story is the father's descent into paranoia. At first, he's a hopeful character. He's trying so hard to grasp onto the flickering light at the end of the tunnel. He truly hopes for a better life for his son, but as he weakens physically and mentally, that light becomes even more faint. Although, for as pessimistic as McCarthy is about the world, he still keeps the essence of humanity's willpower. There is something to overcome despite how overwhelming it continues to be. That's why I can see how many folks can view this as an allegory on depression or suicide because of how recurring it is to the story in a sort of subtle temptation that the characters try to reject. I've talked about how many stories, especially when it comes to horror stuff, have helped me cope with mental health issues, and when talking about the road, it has a way of encouraging that willpower. While certain stories about suicide and depression have definitely proven to speak sensitively about these issues, unlike some things that ignorantly misrepresent and misunderstand it completely that despite arrogantly thinking it raises awareness of said issues, it potentially glorifies them, the road puts you into the ugliest, nastiest scenario possible that you truly find yourself holding out for a positive outcome because you do not want to accept that things can be this dire. The father treads a fine line between faith and nihilism. He keeps telling his son to expect the worst to happen, but he pushes him towards a sanctuary that's totally abstract and unclear to them. Hell, there's zero indication that anything good lies at the end of this road, but I guess the father has to keep justifying why they're still going. That's the thing, it doesn't describe what the father really wants, he just refuses to accept that everything is gone, but even when they do find sanctuary in the form of an untouched bomb shelter housing food, water and living essentials, just a mere strange noise is enough to scare the father into thinking they're no longer safe. It's like the father is personally running away from his fears and dragging his son along with him. Since the journey commenced after his wife's suicide, he's constantly fighting between two conflicting mindsets, follow his wife or follow his faith. And the latter, whilst it might have conflicting arguments, at least might give his son a chance at life. The son does represent a form of morality as he tries to see the better side of humanity and encourage his father to not be so hostile and distrustful. But but that's futile when the father experienced what the world was before the collapse, while the son's knowledge is only what the world is now. Yet what's important is that while the son has no impression of the former world, seeing him try to focus on the goodness left within it reinforces a genuine sense of hope at the end. Of course, when they finally make it to the proverbial edge of the world to find that it's just another extension to their purgatory, rather than the bright colourful blue ocean the son was hoping for, it is demoralising, especially since the father dies shortly after. Now, the thing about the father is there's this implication that because of his fears, he was forcing his son in the wrong direction to begin with. That is, they inadvertently ran away from the glimmer of hope they've been looking for in the form of another family who have stuck together through all of this. It symbolises the father as the last remnants of the son's former life, one defined by fear, hostility, and the never-ending assumption that death is close behind, with the family who 
were close behind actually symbolizing the opposite, and seeing the sun as their glimmer of hope, one that they've been following from the very beginning. While the story instills the father's mindset into the audience and the son, the stranger might first appear morally ambiguous, but with a family, I like to believe that McCarthy's version of hope isn't just the same fortified military shelter untouched by death like every post-apocalyptic story out there, but instead, hope is about finding it in others. It's togetherness, it's the feeling that you're not alone and there is someone or even something watching your back, like this new family, or if you're spiritually inclined, the son's parents. The road doesn't hold your hand and make a happy ending clear to you. It gives you the pieces to put your own emotional disposition into the story. You could see this as a sad ending if you become consumed by the father's tragic perception of the world, or you could see it like the son, where you can't have the bad without the good because you need something to counteract these two extremities, or what's the point of having a perception of the world? World when it becomes completely meaningless. Well, that was definitely something. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and to those that stuck around to the end of this video, I sincerely admire your willpower. As you can tell, making depressing content, especially when it comes to horror stuff and very tough subject matter, can be very taxing on mental health, so I really do sincerely appreciate uh, you watching these videos and uh, sharing, liking, commenting, and all that there as well. If you want to go an extra step further and uh, support me on Patreon, you can get early access, you can vote on what the next video could be, you could get your name in the credits and get access to our exclusive Discord chat where you can talk about all sorts of things from video games to movies to comic books to, to books in general to art, whatever it may be, you know. There's an awesome little community there waiting for you to become part of it, so consider that as well. And until next time, uh, leave your thoughts on the road and Cormac McCarthy in the comments below, and I'll see you all very soon. Stay safe. Bye. I did that in the opposite order.